Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeanette Amanfo. Um, I wanted to share a few things with you that's been on my heart. You know, for years, the Lord has given me biblical dreams. I've had a lot of dreams that God has given me, and many of them have come to pass, and many of them were uh, warning dreams of warning. So I would be praying for whatever the Lord was giving me in a dream. I wanted to share with you one that I can think about with my oldest son. This has been many years ago, uh, but my son had gotten himself into drugs, and he was drinking uh, quite a bit. Well, he was on his way for, home from work, and he was driving his truck, and he had some drugs on him, in which I didn't know he was into drugs. I knew he was drinking, but he had drugs on him, and he had been drinking. Now, you can't be drinking and driving, especially here in America. You get caught with that, you're in big trouble. Well, my son happened to see a police officer was ready to pull him over. And so, because he had a, an open uh, beer and he had drugs on him, he didn't pull over. He wanted to outrun the cop. And that's not a good thing to do. But he took off in his vehicle and he went down a ditch. And he took off running. He left his vehicle right there and he took off running. Well, the police officer just happened to have a police dog with him. Well, my son was running and running and running from uh, the cop and his dog. And he told me later, much later, that he threw out his bag of drugs that he had on him. And the dog caught him, tore off a little piece of his ear, just a little piece. You can't even really notice it. But it took off a piece of my son's ear. His shirt was torn from him running through the trees and getting caught on branches and things. Well, anyways, he, um, the cop caught up to him and placed my son under arrest. Well, at this time this was happening, I was at home in bed sleeping. And I had a dream that my son died. Inside my dream, I woke up, and I was still in my dream, but inside of it, I woke up, and my niece and the neighbor boy was there, and I said to them, Matt really didn't die, did he? And they said to me, yes, Nat, he did. Well, when, when they said that to me, I immediately woke up out of my dream, I got out of bed, I fell to my knees, and I began to call out on God for my son. I began to beg God, Lord, you're a merciful God. Have mercy on my son. Have mercy on my son. Father, save him. Save him. Don't, don't let no harm come nigh to him. Cover him with the blood of Jesus. That was a dream of warning. Later, I found out it was the next day. My son called me from jail and he said, Mom, I'm in jail. And I says, For what? What happened? And he said, Oh, I got stupid last night. I was drinking and I tried to outrun a cop. Well, he still never told me about the drugs. He I didn't know about the drugs till years later. But he was telling me about he was drinking and driving. And then I remembered the dream I had. But my son went to court and he stood before the judge. And this is what the judge told him. He says, young man, do you know at any time by you outrunning that police officer that he could have shot you? You could have been killed, young man, by outrunning the police officer. My son says, yes, your honor. But I don't really believe that my son really understood the impact of that. He could have been dead. And he wouldn't have went to heaven because he wasn't living for the Lord. He was not living for Jesus. And he would have been in hell. But see, God is so merciful. 
He honors the prayers of the righteous. And I pray daily, daily, throughout the day for my children and my grandchildren. And the Lord gave me that dream of warning to pray for my son Matthew because that officer could have killed him. But it was the hand of God that kept that officer from killing my son when he was running from the policeman. You know, the Bible tells us the prayers of the righteous prevaileth much. But he warns us of what sin will do. There's consequences to sin. Many of us don't see that. Many of us don't take warning of the consequences. And we, and people die left and right in their sin. They, they continue to do what they know not to do. They continue to do drugs. And they, they overdose and they die doing drugs. Many of them die automobile accidents, drinking and driving. Some are killed by drive-by shootings. Some go to sleep and never wake up. There's all different sorts of things that takes man's life. But God is such a merciful God. He gives warning. He gives warning to his people time and time again. What I want to say today is God is giving warning to a lot of you. And some of you have not been paying attention. Some of you have not been awake to pay attention, so to speak. God has been giving warning to man about come out from the worldly ways. You know, we live in the world, but it doesn't mean we have to abide by the world. We don't have to associate with the worldly goods. We don't have to go to the nightclubs, to the bars. We don't have to go drinking and partying with our friends. We don't have to go to those movies that are are of filth and vulgarity. We don't have to sit at home and watch TV programs that are not godly, that are so unclean, that are showing women half naked and men in, in bed with women and in all this trash that is not of God. The Bible tells us to be like Jesus. Would you see Jesus sit there watch that? If you can never see our Lord Jesus Christ sitting there watching that kind of a movie, then you ought not to watch it. We are to be like him. Does it mean we're ever going to be perfect like him? I do not believe so until we get to heaven. Then we will be perfect as he is. But we're to strive to be like him. There is no excuse. There's nothing that, oh, somebody forced me to or somebody begged me to. You have a free will. You have a mind. The Bible give God tells us he has given us our own free will. He will not force us to serve him. He will not force us to do things that our will and our desire does not want to do. Rather, um, he's asking it from us or not. He gives us our own heart's desire. Many of us go and turn our backs from the Lord and we do the things that we ought not to do and we know not to do them. Some people have was serving God faithfully for years and then they turn their back on the Lord. The Bible tells us it is better for a man never to have known the Lord than to turn their back on God and die in their sin. It will be worse for the one that knew Jesus here on earth and then go to hell. It will be worse for them because at one time they knew the Lord and they turned their back on God. People, I'm telling you what, the world is crazy right now. I'm not just speaking of the COVID, um, which man is trying to have everybody wear masks. They're trying to uh, make everybody take the COVID shot. If you have not taken it, Please, I urge you, do not take it. That is not a godly thing. I don't care who tells you it's okay to take it. Do not take it. The Lord has been warning his prophets. He's been warning his people, his children. Do not take the shot. The shot is killing people. It is crippling people. It is making people not the same. It is killing white blood counts. There's a lot of things that shot is doing that is not good for man. 
and it's taking people out left and right. People, count on God. Don't, don't take the shot if you have not. And if you have, the Lord said he will forgive you if you ask him to. Many have taken the shot because they just thought, oh, this is the way to do it. But God said, God said through a prophet, if you t have taken the shot and you repent, I will forgive you and I will reverse what that shot is going to do to the people that have taken it. So repent, ask the Lord to forgive you for taking the shot because it's not a good thing that you have taken it. A lot of people taking it out of travel needs. Well, I can't travel unless I take it. Well, I can't do this unless I take it. People repent. Repent for taking the shot. You know, I as I see how this world is going, I see so many people lost. Many people have taken their life because they say the end of the world is coming and I don't want to see the end. And they've taken their life. They've literally shot, the husband and wife have shot their children and then they killed themselves. Because they did not want to see what the end was going to do. This thing is not a good thing. It is very, very sad that people will take their own life because they're scared of what the, the world is coming to. But let me tell you what, saints. If you are in Christ, Jesus is going to be a good time for you. It's not going to always be hard. You know, in the last two months, I have been going through more of a hardship <laughs> than I have in a very long time. It seems like I never have enough money to accomplish what I need to do. I have people asking for help all the time because they're used to me helping them. And I've had to tell many, many people I don't have it. I don't have it. I can't give right now. I don't have it. I'm not lying to them. It's the truth. I have not had it. And even my own children say, Mom, what do you do with your money? You're at work all the time. Well, I still have bills. <laughs> I still have bills to pay whether I'm at work or not. People, let me tell you what. Stop relying on man. Many, many people are relying on man. And you can't rely on man. You, you must look to Jesus. You must look to Jesus. I used to rely on man's help all the time. Oh, I was so poor and so broke and busted and never had anything. Never had two pennies to rub together. And I was always looking for a handout. And the Lord finally gave me the ability to be on my own and do things on my own. I had to stretch my faith. I had to first off begin to start giving my tithes and my offering. I wasn't faithful to that. I wasn't faithful at all for I always thought I never had enough money to pay my tithes and offering. How am I going to give if I don't even have enough money to buy my, my child food? The Lord redeemed me from that. I was able to start giving out of need. My mom told me years ago, she says, Nat, you can't afford not to give. I began to give and the Lord began to bless me. And and now I've been working um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week here since April. Um, except for the month I went to Kenya for uh, the month of August. I took a whole month off. And I take a few days here and there off because I really need those days. Uh, but let me tell you, people, Jesus loves and cares for you like no other. He loves you. He sees every need that you have. He sees your heart's desire. You know, he said, when you wake up, he tells us daily, he says, that we are to seek first. Seek first. What what does that mean first? That means before anything else. Before you start your day of dressing your children or running off to work or doing this or doing that. Seek the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Then the our desires will be added unto us. 
You know, many times we just look out, we just looking for handouts and we're not seeking the Lord at all. We're not desiring the things of God. We're not looking to him. We're not, we're not asking of him. We're asking man. You know, the Bible tells us we're cursed when we look to man and not to him. <laughs> People, you got to look to God. You know, he desires us to look for him. God is a jealous God. He doesn't want man to stand in his place. He doesn't want man to get his glory. He wants to get the glory because the glory all belongs to him. It does not belong to man. When I give to people, I don't want people to ever give me glory. I don't want them going about telling everybody else, Oh, uh, Jeanette, give me this or that or this or that. I don't want that. All I ask for is a simple thank you, just so I know that you are appreciated, that God's children give. Not to look big at me, not to lift me up, nothing, nothing like that at all. I don't want the glory of man. I don't want the praise of man. I want to glorify God in all that I do. And when I do give to people... I glorify the Lord by giving because he tells us to give to the needy. He tells us to give to the hungry. He tells us to give to the poor. And I do that. But he also tells us the poor we will have with us always. That tells me I can't give to everybody. And there's many I tell I I can't give. I, I don't have it. I have plenty more I'm already given to I'm sorry but you'll have to ask someone else to help you because I've already stretched myself so much into giving to so many I can't give very much to people because I have so many I'm given to and if I keep doing that to other people and other people it's going to be even less the ones that I'm already helping will receive from me and I don't want that I need to I need to continue to give and I will continue to give as God blesses me I'm going to continue to bless man because that's who I am But I want you I want you to begin to say Lord what will you have me do as your servant as your child What would you ask from me Lord You know he has something for all of us to do and I see right now there are some parents that withhold your children from doing certain things. Now, I'm not saying let them step out there in danger. You must watch your child. But you know, God has given our children gifts that he has not given to us. Who are you to say what gifts belong to your children? Who are you to question God? Who are you to say, no, that is not what you ought to do. No, that is not who you're going to be. No. You know, the Lord, the Lord gives man gifts. He gives our children gifts. Some of them start out very, very young. And we see the talent begin to grow even as they're a young child. Even if it's a story they're telling. Maybe they're going to be a storyteller. Maybe they're going to be a writer. Maybe they're going to put their stories to a book when they're a little older. Maybe they just want to sing. Maybe they're going to be a singer. Some of them pretend to be preaching. Let them preach, brothers and sisters. Let them preach because they're called to be a preacher. Don't stop what your children are doing. If it's not bringing harm, if it's not in the wrong, why discourage them? Why tell them that's not what they ought to do? Don't do that. You're discouraging your child and God does not like it. He wants us to lift our children up. He wants us to talk good to our children. He wants us to encourage them. Encourage them because all things are possible with the Lord. Don't discourage your children. You know, I taught, I was reminded I, when I was in Kenya for that month, one of the services I taught the Lord was showing me that, that people were discouraging the children. And I see it again, and it's not good. Don't discourage the children. Let children roam. Let them be free to experience what the Lord has, has given to them. They don't, it, they necessarily do not have the same desire that you do. 
and your desire for your child might be different than what God's desire for them is. Don't question God. Pray and ask him. Don't don't question him, Lord, why are you giving this to my child? No, because God knows what's best. He knows how to use us. But you can say, when you see your child doing certain things, say, Lord, is this from you? It's okay to ask him that. Lord, are you giving this desire to my child? Just so you know how to encourage him. Sons and daughters need to be encouraged. Never lift up your your son over your daughter. I know a lot of people do that, and that is not good. God said he is no respecter of person. Don't praise up your son and cut down your daughter. Don't praise up your daughter and cut down your son. Don't think your son is supposed to go somewhere and your daughter's not. That is not right at all. There's prophetess of women prophetess all over the place. There's men prophets all over the place. God does not say, well, that girl's not going to go anywhere, but I'm raising up the boy. Don't do that to your child. Lift them both up. Praise them both up. Encourage the both of them. Let them know that God can use the both of them in a mighty way. I know I went all over, but this is what's coming from me, so this is what you're hearing You know, brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to seek him in spirit and in truth. He wants our whole heart. He doesn't want just part of us. Many of us just give a little portion of our time to the Lord. We we only, you know, we we don't look to him for all things. We just look to him for minor little things. But we can trust him for, okay, Lord, I can trust you for a dollar to buy a loaf of bread. But you can't trust him to pay your rent. Shame on you. Don't you think God's a big God? Don't you think that he owns a cattle on a thousand years? He created this world for crying out loud. Why are you putting limits on him? Stop putting limits on God. Stop seeing him as a small a small God because he's not a small God. He's a great big God. And he can supply all your needs. That's what he says in his word. All your needs. He never said, I will buy you a loaf of bread, but oh boy, to pay your rent. That's asking a lot from me. He doesn't say that. He doesn't talk like that. He does not put limits on how much he can bless you. We put limits on how much he can bless us. We limit God. We we pull his arms back and say, Well, I only believe in you for this little bit, Lord, but I am not believing you for the great big. Shame on us. What is our mind thinking? What is our heart dwelling on? Stop this. It's not of God. It's not godly. It's not right. We must focus on the trueness of God. He said he can do all things. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. He said there is no limit on him. He is not a limited God. If he can supply you with a dollar, he can supply you with a hundred thousand dollars. Stop putting a limit on him. I'm speaking to myself right now too. People, I love you. So I'm going to come out with the truth. I will tell you what I see. I'll tell you what I know. And what the Lord speaks to me. And oftentimes God shows me people. He'll show me right in your living room. He'll show me when you're working outside. Husking corn. I've seen people working in the fields. I've seen oftentimes right now. I'm seeing a gentleman plowing a field. He has a a, a hoe. And he's digging into the ground. He's an older gentleman and he's all by himself. I see a lot of things the Lord shows me. Not always do I understand what he's showing me, although he is showing me things. And later on he gives me the he gives me the word why he showed me something. People stop putting limits on God. He he's not a God that ought to be held back and put in a cage. He's free. Give him free to roam in your life. Give him free to create in your life the atmosphere that he desires for you. You know, he wants everything. He wants all of you. He wants every part of you. Don't limit him. I love you. 
I want you to be blessed. You're welcome to tell me anything that you feel about the feedback for what I'm telling you. God bless you. I want to pray with you. Father, I thank you for every man and woman, boy and girl that is watching me today. I thank you for the body of Christ. I thank you, Father, that you, you desire all of us, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you're a giving God, a loving God, a gentle God, a merciful God. Oh, Lord, dwell inside of us. Meet our every need. Supply our every need, Lord Jesus. Speak to our heart and help us, Lord, to have the heart to know you. Open our ears, Lord Jesus, to hear you in the smallest of whisper. Open our eyes, Lord, that we will see you. See you for who you are with no limits. In the name of Jesus, I bless you today. Go in God, go in peace wherever you are. Ignore all those things that are not of God. Just place those in the hands of the Lord because it, they don't belong to you. Many grab a hold of all these ugly things that come against them. God doesn't want that. Place them in the hands of God. Turn those people over to the Lord. You know, I've had to do that many times. And I just did it again yesterday. I had to turn someone over to the Lord. I said, okay, God, I heard the Lord tell me. Let him take over. Let him take care of the situation. And he said, do you trust me? I said, yes, Lord, I trust you. So I knew I had to release it. I had to let that go so God can do his work. And I give him glory that he loves me enough that he said, let me take care of it for you. I don't have to fight the battle. I don't have to prove a purpose God is my fighter he is the one that will stand before me and he will fight the weapon for me go in peace I love you shalom